Hello and welcome to another episode of the Tejano Traveler. Today's travel adventure takes us to the Houston Museum of Natural Science. To start off with, we'll go to the Insectarium, where we will learn more about all these creepy crawlies and bugs, but mostly butterflies and moths and their counterparts. You see the different cocoon stages right before they release them into the butterfly center. The Cockerell Butterfly Center is a huge cone-shaped pyramid where they keep the butterflies where they're allowed to roam freely. They fly wherever they want to, fluttering here and there to feast on the nectar that they leave out for them. Now these greeneries and plants and tropical species are perfect for these butterflies. There's one butterfly having a vegetable piece. All you need is some chilito and it'll be perfect. But they've got all sorts of butterflies in different sizes from tiny little ones to butterflies as big as your hands. The very bottom is a waterfall. Then did you ride into the Hall of Paleontology? This recently renovated hall has everything you would want in a paleontology museum. It's got plenty of specimens to showcase the different eras that we have lived in as a planet. There's plenty of trilobites. There's a fish that people thought was extinct, but was actually swimming off the coast of Africa. Some of these fossils look like works of art. And there's my love, Dimetrodon. Dimetrodon, I love you. And that's what he looks like without his skin. Whiting's off. But the rest of the museum has plenty of fossils of all shapes and sizes and animals through all the different eras of the past. Jurassic, Triassic, Mesozoic, you name it, they have it here. So they've done a pretty good job at remodeling it. It's one of my favorite paleontology museums in the world currently that I have seen. I like how they've put up all the different fossils in different modeling situations like this one is up in the sky not to show that it was flying but to show that it's swimming there's plenty of fossils to look at you can easily spend three or four hours just reading about all the different fossils that we've had and how they are important to understanding the biodiversity of this world. Of course, we have the major fossils, which is the brontosaurus and velociraptor and T-Rex. It's not a museum without T-Rex. I have a post here looking for hunt, hunting the vegan dinosaurs. And there's the face off most amazing face up ever between my second love, Triceratops, and his mortal enemy, T-Rex. It's always been a good fight between them. But usually, Triceratops comes out the top, I think. There's a Quetzalcoatlus, Texas is a giant bird, slash reptile, slash dino. There's the Mosasaurus, trying to chomp on the turtle with those awesome teeth. Here's some more work of art by Mother Nature. And now we're finally into the Ice Age with Megalo Shark right behind. It wouldn't be an Ice Age showcase without mammoths and mastodons and big huge bears. 
and the giant slot. Look at the size of that. It's referred to as Megafauna, which is one of my favorite words ever. We have Glyptodon and the poor Smilodon trying to get into it for its juicy meats. This is my favorite. It's a mammoth stampede with them throwing humans up into the air. And there's our fossil record to show us how we got to where we are. One last look at Triceratops and T-Rex and then we're on to other areas of the museum. It's kind of sad that the Egyptian wing and the Mesoamerican wing were closed down but hopefully I'll be back to take video of that. In the meantime I went to the planetarium. There's different planetarium shows that they have. I chose the one that just shows the night sky because that's what I'm interested in. <coughs> then we have the gem and mineral hall. This is also a favorite of mine. I could spend hours here just looking at the different minerals and learning about them. I like how they showcase them. It's all eerie and magical and special and it shows you how they've used them for decorations throughout the ages. And look how they shine. If you are planning a heist, please call me. I want the one on the left. And of course, Malacology. My love of Malacology knows no bounds. From this museum, it has shelves and shelves and shelves of Malacology. I could spend all day here just learning about them. And they also have a Hall of Biodiversity, which has dioramas of animals living in their natural habitats. There's zebras and lions and deer, elephants, hyenas, crocs and alligators, turkeys, birds, warthogs. They have it all. And they showcase the different types of biomes that they live in. This is a Hall of Curiosities, which I wish I had one. When I become rich from this channel and have a mansion, I will definitely have a Hall of Curiosities. The last level I looked at was the Hall of Energy. Now a lot of the energy companies in the area are some of the big sponsors of the museum. So of course they want to showcase some of what they do. Um, my favorite was this drill. That's how they drill. Three drills going in a counterclockwise rotation. It's interesting seeing the history of energy. Energy is important. I wish we were a bit greener, but we're getting there little by little. But I'm glad that they donate money for this endeavor so you can see how awesome it is. Have any museum. Anyways, make sure to go visit it. If there's one museum to visit with your family, this one should probably be it in the Houston area. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and hope you have a good day. Bye bye.